All right, all right. Welcome. Welcome back, sister friends. We are here for day two of our annual, not day two, session two of our annual planning retreat. I've got Dr. AJ Austin with me. I'm going to introduce her to you all in a minute. Um, if you could comment below, let us know that you can hear us and that you can see us in all the things. Um, we want to make sure you guys are in the right place. And also tell us how you enjoyed that last session. I would so love to know one of your biggest ahas, one of your biggest takeaways from the last session. Okay, good. Yay. It's up. So glad you can see us, Terry. Woohoo! Yay. So let us know in the comments below what you enjoyed about that first session that we had. Um, maybe one of your biggest takeaways, et cetera. Let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all can see us and hear us. Yes. Terry says it was a great session. I'm so glad that it was. I saw one of the things, one of the comments was um, you guys felt like you were being stretched and that's a good thing. That means you're in the right place. Look, if you show up to events and you kind of sort of leave the same way you came, that event was not worth your time. <laughs> it was not worth your time, your money, your effort at all. You should leave with some level of a transformation. And so that makes my heart happy to read that and hear that. All right, y'all, I'm going to introduce Dr. AJ Austin to you guys. Um, she was actually on our podcast. You can actually find it at episode 37 if you want to hear more about that interview that we did. But let me introduce her to you. Dr. AJ Austin went from homelessness, divorce, and the death of her mother all in the same day. And now she shares how all of this led to her becoming an award-winning professional speaker, 16-time author and bestseller, a master life, coach, uh, master life coach certification trainer for Black women of faith, having generated over six figures in sales by partnering as a lead master life coach trainer with an established life coach certification brand in Atlanta, Georgia. And now she's doubling her impact and income with her own life coaching certification training brand. And she's certified over 169 Black women certified life coaches worldwide. And she's the CEO in, in, of the International Center for Life Coach Training, LLC. And you can learn more about Dr. AJ at futureblacklifecoaches.com. So welcome, Dr. AJ. Guys, give her a nice, warm welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. I'm so honored. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, guys, look, make sure that you go over into the training library and you download what Dr. AJ has for you all. It is in, um, in the handbook section. Um, I'm going to post it here in the chat just in case you don't, you don't have like the direct link to get over there. I'm going to post it right here. You can go right there and you can download the workbook and things that she has for you. But really right now, guys, what I'm going to do, guys, ladies, I'm going to literally just pass the floor over to Dr. AJ. She's going to take over and you guys are going to have a great time. I will be monitoring the chat um, and hoping to facilitate on the back end at this point. All right, y'all, you guys enjoy. And I decided, yes, it's okay if you want to copy and paste the questions in the Zoom chat. Um, because I see how fast they're scrolling. I did not, I did not anticipate that. So please and thank you. <laughs> um, I am sharing my screen with you guys. Give me one moment to get it set up again. And here we go. Can you see my screen before I start? Let me double check. Okay. Looks like all is well. Here we go. Andrika Austin here. I'm extremely proud I went from the loss of a job and homelessness to building a global master life coach training agency. I achieved my goals and in the process discovered my passion and purpose. Today, I do the same thing for women all around the world. I learned the power of coaching and discovered the secrets to help other women live their best life. I've been mastering this learnable skill set for years, and as a result, I've been able to transfer my proven processes to celebrities, public figures, and superstar women who have the desire to change lives by becoming a certified life coach through my Master Life Coach Training Agency. 
Millions of lives are being impacted through my virtual and live events and my assemblage of certified life coaches. And I haven't had a single failure when they implement my proven process. This is my way of passing it forward. I so look forward to sharing my life's work with you. A life's work that is transferable. A life's work that is duplicatable. A life's work that will help you connect with people in a way you never dreamed possible. Doing something you believe in so that you can touch millions of others' lives on this planet while you're here. I can think of nothing that I would rather do than gift to you. I'm Coach AJ Austin, an award-winning professional speaker, 16-time author and bestseller, and a master life coach certification trainer with years of experience under fire, doing the real work with real people with real lives. I know this will be hard for you to believe, but I would love to get you my life's work. Find out where I am and I would love to gift you something that can change the quality of your life while allowing you to help people transform the lives of other people like you with families like yours. All right, guys, so I know we are on a bit of a delay here on Facebook. That's why you see me with this in my ear. I was listening with you guys to so make sure you can hear what I heard. I want you to know that there is someone somewhere and they are waiting on you. Yes, you. You're here right now today in the right place. They're waiting on you to walk in your destiny so they can walk into theirs. Now, have you ever thought about that? Oh my gosh, it's such a heavy mantle, but I believe that's why we're here today. And that's one of my famous slogans. I'll fill in the rest because there's more to it. If you're one of our futureblacklifecoaches.com members, then you already know the rest of the slogan, right? So you probably said it with me. I am Dr. AJ Austin. Since 1994, I have been uh, on my grind, y'all. In 94, believe it or not, I was only 14 years old, but that was my very first job. And I've held a total of 23 part-time and full-time jobs and countless volunteer and leadership positions with my church and my community, different corporations, with a few of the most recent ones being places like Facebook. Yes, the Facebook on their uh, end user exchange. The Public Gardens Association, which is a big deal here in Atlanta. If you've ever been to Atlanta, the Atlanta Botanical Gardens, they are one of my clients. The Small Business Administration or SBA, maybe you have one in a city near you. I've spoken of, on the stage of Fiverr multiple times. Yes, the Fiverr, where we hire people to help us with our graphics and designs. Also, there is a Black millionaire family here in Atlanta called the Bronner Brothers. Have y'all ever heard of them? If you look like me, your hair looks like mine, you probably have some of their products in your bathroom, okay? Maybe you have their lotions if you don't put the products in your hair, but they're here, they're in Atlanta. They have a business uh, institute called BBI. They are one of my clients. Um, BBI was founded by Dale Brunner. He's one of the multi-million dollar Brunner brothers with that hair care line. And also the Herndon Foundation. They were one of the first black millionaire families here in Atlanta as well. Um, and recently I spoke on the virtual stage for the Attention Deficit Disorder Association or ADD.org. So if your brain kind of works like mine, not only are we A plus, like uh, we heard earlier, we are ADD-ish. We can't sit still, we can't focus long. So I'm gonna make this quick, okay? <laughs> so I have helped other companies reach six figures in the life coaching space. And then I did bring my own coaching company online within the last few months. We are now at 82K, working part-time about 10 hours a week, sitting right here in front of my laptop at the time of this recording, we have about 181 Black women certified life coaches all over the world. Some of them are here with us today. Um, I have written 16 books. So yes, if you Google me, if you Amazon search me, you can find some of my books. I'm giving away one of those books today for somebody. So make sure you stay tuned and stay listening. I am the podcast producer um, and owner of Data Ministries and Media 
We have a radio show, a TV show, and it's all for future Black Life Coaches. So if you head over to futureblacklifecoaches.com, you can become a part of the community that I run. I'm in the community. We are a community of coaches, some certified, some on their way to getting certified, but all a part of my story. And then the banner that you see at the bottom is that As Seen On banner where different partnerships, um, sponsorships, speaking opportunities, coaching platforms I have partnered with over time time and many of them I have just shared and mentioned with you. So after today's session, let me tell you what you're going to learn. Number one, because the theme of today's event is seeing how to get back on track, I'm going to see or help you see how to get back on track using your story and how you can make money from that story. We're going to also design your strategy for getting closer to that back on track goal, okay? And then finally, we're going to wrap up by you setting your intentions for creating a solution to help you stay on track. Did you know that 70% of women small business owners make less than $25,000 a year? That is a statistic shared by the U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce. And it hurt my heart when I first discovered, and you'll kind of hear my story about how that was me. And maybe you're finding yourself in a place, you may be a new business owner, you may be a future business owner. You may have been in this thing for a minute and you still are not seeing over that number. I'm going to show you how to use the power of your story to make an impact on that statistic. Here's just a quick screenshot from one of my coaching accounts from, again, working part time in my coaching company, but it hasn't always been this way. Now, what I do want to see real quick in the comments, they are scrolling by super fast. I'm looking at y'all on my left hand side. It's like a teleprompter, but y'all are talking and typing and I can't share what I'm sharing straight ahead and look at y'all fast enough to get everybody. I see there are lots of you here, but how many of you would love to see an amount like this just sitting? waiting on you to either invest it, go on vacation, spend it. You can do that with the power of your story. And I'm going to show you how I've been able to do it successfully. So number one is your story. That's tip number one. So if you're taking notes, which I believe you are, because we're always instructed in the kingdom influencers to bring our journals and our favorite drink and our favorite cute little pen and be ready to write. So write down number one, because it's all about your story. This is me, baby AJ, firstborn, only girl, born to a 19-year-old mom who prayed for a girl, and she got me. I won that race, y'all. You did too. You here? <laughs> she prayed. Someone is praying for you right now. Y'all can tell this picture is kind of old. It's ripped at the top a little bit, but my little chubby cheeks, I look just like my grandpa AJ, so that's why I go by AJ. It's a family name, legacy heirloom. And this is where the journey began. Here is me uh, and a few of my teammates where I was seven years old and a cheerleader for my local community. We were called the Tiger Cubs. Y'all can see at the bottom, it says 1987. Where were you in 87, right? So I'm seven years old. I'm a cheerleader. I did it because my friends were doing it. But now I'm a cheerleader for coaches. And so I love knowing that my mom supported the fact that I wanted to do what my friends were doing. She kept that little uniform forever. Um, and so I'm glad that I have a picture of what it looks like in the very beginning. Speaking of the beginning, this is the beginning of social media for me. I was a social media star in my hometown. My mom made sure I stayed in what's called the paper. I mean, y'all know what the paper is. The newspaper, old school, traditional. But I won a reading contest and I got paid for it. And if you look in the little far left corner, you see a guy on his knee with a camera. That was CNN. Yes, the CNN television. They brought me... Um, Onto a show, they were recording me receiving this reward for reading. So I made about 89 bucks into a nine-year-old. I was rich. You couldn't tell me nothing. But this was literally the people standing behind me and looking at me. I know who each one of them <laughs> is sitting in the audience. This was my very first audience. And I was so focused. You could tell I was serious. Like, give me my money. I did reading. I, you know, I just want to get the check. So in the bottom, it tells you, you know, I was nine years old. That's about 1989 or so. But this was the beginning of my rise to social media fame before, way before there was a social media. This is a continuation of that rise to stardom. 
um, where I saw what it was like to be featured with people with big names because of my story. Now, one thing that I didn't share is I come from low income housing, government assistance, food stamps, Medicaid, all the help that the government could give. My family received it. And so to be on television, to be featured in the newspaper, and now to be in this picture, directly behind me is my mom looking like a young Oprah when Oprah had the big hair back in the day. She hated taking pictures, so she was in the back trying to hide. But uh, this is us in the 80s. Um, this is my hometown, Douglasville, Georgia's uh, first Black superintendent, Jim Still. He's to the very far left, the only man in the picture. He passed away just a few short days ago. Um, and then to the far right in the front, um, a lady named Miss Shirley. She was the candy lady. How many of y'all know what a candy lady is in the hood, right? She was also the first Black entrepreneur in my hood that I knew of. She was that staple in our community because of all of her philanthropic endeavors. And then kind of standing in the back beside my mom was Miss Peggy or our black rent office lady. She hosted that reading award program ceremony in our leasing center of our neighborhood. And I share that because again, this was the beginning of who you see today before you as Dr. AJ Austin. This is my very first school ID y'all. I have finally made it left my little country hometown of Douglasville, Georgia, went 30 minutes up the streets of Clark Atlanta University. This is my freshman. Before the freshman 15 kicked in, y'all know what that is? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit more than 15. I would love to be that size again. We, we coming, coming to it. <laughs> I also had $100,000 in scholarships, a full ride. I was getting paid to go to school, but life happened. Scholarship money dried up. The rules changed for what your GPA had to be. So I decided to drop out. Any dropouts in the house tonight? Don't be afraid. I'm on camera. At least we can't see your face, right? So I got a full-time job instead. And then eventually, I also got married. And then on April 14th, 2008, here we are in the 21st century, I found myself at the courthouse in downtown Decatur, Georgia, attending a divorce trial that would make a five-year marriage final. It was my marriage, y'all. So I remember I signed on the dotted line, making it official. And as I walked down the hallway and headed toward the elevator, I pushed the down button on the elevator. And once I got inside the elevator and the doors began to close and I saw my now ex-husband for the very last time, my phone rang inside my purse. And so as I descended down to the lobby floor, I took a chance on getting a cell phone signal inside the elevator because you usually can't um, hear on the, the phone on the elevator, but reached in my purse, pulled out my phone, glad I answered it, glad I took that chance on that elevator ride because it was my cousin. She was calling to tell me that my mom had just passed away. Now, this was the same mom y'all saw with the Oprah Fro. She now had a short hairdo, which is kind of why I rock my do now. We rock the short dudes very well. This was, again, one of the few pictures that she wanted to take. Not really. One of her cousins convinced her to take a picture, and I'm glad she did. This is in 1999 at my high school graduation, and that was my twin. Still today, people tell me how much I look like her. She was 47 years old, or shall I say young? So at the time I was also, while dealing with the death of my mom, living in a transitional housing facility because I mentioned that I've gone through divorce, separation, now homelessness, now transitional housing facility. Uh, so many things happening at the same time. Has that ever happened to anyone on here out of all of you guys who are here today? Have you ever just felt like life? <laughs> Hashtag life because I was living in that transitional housing facility. It was for what's called the working poor. So because I was used to government assistance, I was used to a handout, I was used to certain living situations, this just piled on top of everything that I was used to. But y'all, that wasn't it, you know? I thought that was my testimony, but God said, oh, daughter, wait one moment. And I realized that I probably experienced what I experienced in that moment because he, uh, put something in me that he knew I could trust. I could trust, he could trust. He could trust that I wasn't going to lose it. 
He could trust that I wasn't going to break down. He could trust that I would get here to this moment because shortly after all that happened, y'all, my corporate job also downsized. I remember they called me in 2008 on Father's Day. Um, Was it 2008? It just seems like so long ago, but it was all of these things on top of another. And I just thought, okay, Lord, will would it end? So that's a brief synopsis of my story. Can anyone relate to anything? that I just shared. Maybe you see yourself in that moment. Um, The picture that you're looking at here is the converted prison. This was the housing facility for the working poor. So maybe you've found yourself in a shelter or on the uh, basement floor, on couch pillows, or in guest bedrooms of family and friends, because you're just (sighs) life, right? Anybody, can you relate? I just need to know in the comments real quick. Because what I needed in part two, which you should now write in your journals, was a strategy, y'all. It was time. I said, okay, God, now I've been let go. I'm tired of getting let go. I'm tired of people making decisions for me. I'm tired of not knowing what's coming next. And so, you know, the word in Habakkuk that tells us to write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it can run with it. Well, that was part of the strategy. It was time to write, what did I want my life to look like since I had all this new free time, since I'm newly single and trying to just rebuild? What did I want my next to look like? So I wrote the vision. I knew I wanted to be a future business owner. Again, I was tired of let, being let go. I was tired of it being dark when I went into work, getting dark when I got off of work, and just not being happy with where I was in my life. So soon after my corporate job downsized, it was at that point that I decided to take back my destiny. Anybody here ready to take back your destiny? Like enough is enough. So I spent those next few years. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen just because I prayed without ceasing, still praying today, but it took years for me to get my life together. But I, I, in the meantime, felt like I still needed permission. Who here feels like they need permission? If you were at the pajama party the other night, I mentioned how platforms like what we're experiencing today kind of taps us on our shoulder and gives us that permission to move forward, be bolder, stand up, say yes, write the vision, make the decision of what your destiny will look like with the help of God, of course. So I personally have always had a burning desire for knowledge and a passion for helping other people, even though I was going through. That was one of the most frequently asked questions I've had over the last few years as a master life coach certification trainer for Black Women of Faith. People say, Dr. AJ, do I need to have my life all figured out, have it all together before I become a coach? Child, do I look like (laughs) I had my life figured out in this moment of me telling God what I wanted my future to look like? So the answer is no, you don't have to have it all together. I also knew that I wanted to help other people, even though I was in the process of helping myself. And as a former psychology major at Clark Atlanta University, that's what I vowed to God. I said, God, here's what I want my future to look like. And I promise that as I help myself, I'm going to also help others. It's my give back. It's my pour into. It's my community service, if you will. But I wanted to start understanding life. I wanted to start understanding how to heal my way through life. And I just, I guess somewhere inside of me, that little small nugget of hope and faith that God put in me said, somebody else is going to need what you're going through. So you're going to help them heal their way through life as well. I see y'all in the comments like, yes, me too, says me too. (laughs) So in 2008, while I was literally sleeping on the pullout couch in the living room of one of my good friends from high school's home, She walked in one day and she said, you know what? You would make a really good speaker, a really good facilitator. And there's this opportunity that is coming to town and I think you should look into it. And it makes me tear up because I'm like, how can anybody look at my life with what I was going through? I was living with her, (laughs) sleeping on her couch, fresh out the shelter. And she was speaking into my life, believing in me, seeing the vision come to life that I had told God I wanted. And what made it so God was that she was a Jehovah's witness. So a lot of stuff we couldn't even talk about because we didn't agree on it. And we made that agreement in high school. If we're going to argue about religion, we just won't talk about it. But if we can talk about basic faith, then we could. And so to know that someone just seen something in me, despite of our differences or despite what it looked like to me in the moment, she spoke into my life. And in 2008, 
thanks to the encouragement of that friend and other friends, I started hosting what's known as enrichment workshops for girls and moms. Yep, while I was still going through. It was in partnership with the Dove Real Beauty Campaign, the Dove Beauty Company. I was one of their trained facilitators here in Atlanta, and we went from a little bit of interest to maybe I'll do this to now this, where we're back in the paper in our local hometown as a snapshot of the day, talking about how we were growing from year to year. These are people who would travel from the city of Atlanta to my little country small town of Douglasville, Georgia. They started coming in from other states because they now could see the vision. These were mothers and daughters who said, you have something that you can pour into my daughter to help us have a better relationship with ourselves and each other. So I made sure we sent those photos in a local newspaper like my mom taught us that social media stardom still continuing on, even in the going through. So I just want to encourage you today. So in these workshops, I would start hearing the conversations of the little girls and just stuff that I could not believe was coming out of eight year olds mouths. And I said, OK, we got to take it from just the basic to step it up. So I decided to branch out after the Dove campaign was over and start becoming a facilitator of youth enrichment seminars around my city. And that caught fire. I wrote a book in 2011 like a love letter to these young ladies, teaching them things that I wish I would have known at their age to empower them. I was given girl-friendly tips, tools, and tidbits uh, with my company that was called Journey Girl at the time. Then I was invited to write for a magazine called the International Women's Magazine um, for a couple of their seasons in the magazines. And so I was growing this new brand that just kind of popped up and I thought came from nowhere, but Again, I wrote the vision. So can I really say, you know, that I didn't know what was happening? What was happening was because I wrote the vision, I made it plain. He who read it could run with it. When I showed up on now what was really known as social media like Facebook and YouTube and told people the, the heart idea that God had dropped in my spirit in the midst of this tumultuous season of my life, they could see that vision. They helped me grow my brand, gain recognition for my work online now. And I started receiving phone calls from several states to quote unquote, borrow my brand. Um, and it was starting to be similar to the partnership that I had as a facilitator with Dove. So instead of borrowing the brand, I decided to become a business coach for people who also had a baby in their belly that they were ready to birth. Um, and so remember how I promised God that I would now help others as I was helping myself through this? Because even in the writing of this book, Book, I was able to start the healing process for the younger me. For three straight years here in Atlanta, my business was now being prayed over. The vision was growing bigger. Look at this more massive audience of people from literally all over the world that will fly in and get their business prayed over from the same Runner Brothers that are now one of my speaking clients. So this was called the business anointing. And this is, again, the Black Millionaire family here in Atlanta that will literally anoint our heads with gold and oil, pray over our business, and give us that permission that we have been seeking to go out in the earth and pursue what God had given us as the vision for our future. And so here I am with a recap for you guys, because I know I dropped a lot, but in a nutshell, here's what happened, okay? After dropping out of college and the downsizing of my corporate career and dealing with homelessness and the death of my mother happening on the same day that my divorce from a five-year marriage became final, this is where deciding to take back my destiny and get back on track by becoming a certified personal life coach saved and changed my life. That was in the decision. What also helped that decision was that life coaching is a $24 billion business. Somebody put billion, you got to spell it like that in the chat. Billion, according to medium.com, and I want it in. So at 25 years old, I remember as I was going through the divorce, as I was going through that life transition, I met um, a lady life coach at a hair salon. This hair salon would cut my hair basically for free in exchange um, for jewelry that I would make by hand. And I made some earrings for a lady who happened to be a lady life coach. And then shortly after that, thanks to a friend telling me about a local two-day training intensive, I became an internationally recognized 
certified personal life coach on April 27th, 2013. This is me and one of my very first million dollar mentors. He was my trainer and my certifier of that class that day. And so what I did was took my notes from class and I studied. I reread the training manual. I read tons of books. I watched various DVDs and online videos and listened to countless cassette tapes and CDs and audiobooks and attended any special event, any conference, webinar, summit, panel, symposium, teleconference that I could get my hands on. Y'all see how thirsty, desperate for what the next move of God was going to be in my life I was? That's how you have to be, especially because all of the reconditioning that I had to program my mind. These were the outlets that I did it with in order to go to my next level. So what I learned in all of that study time, plus that framed certificate, some of us certified coaches are here today. If I got some coaches in the house, let me know. But that little piece of paper, y'all, was my permission. It was on my home office wall. Um, I ended up basically inheriting my mom's home when she passed. So I went from homeless to homeowner for 10 years as I settled her affairs. And I remember just always in the home office getting to see that piece of paper showing me exactly what I needed to do to start my new journey as this certified life coach. I was ready. How many of you guys are ready? Let me see in the chat. Because the mere existence of life coaching as a mental health alternative to counseling, to therapy, to having to become a psychologist or psychiatrist or write prescriptions or diagnose patients or the need to even have a college degree, it was no longer required for me to pursue a career as a life coach. That's another frequently asked question I get. Do I need a degree to become a life coach? The answer is no. Life coach certification saves you from a degree, just like it did for me. Plus... Coaching also scratched that itch. Y'all ever get the itch like, oh, I just want to go teach. I just want to go serve. I just want to go minister. I just want to go help somebody. Well, it helped me to scratch my itch um, to serve more and greater in my purpose. And so getting into the life coaching industry not only saved me from that four-year psychology degree, but it also saved me from over $100,000 in additional student loan debt from Clark Atlanta University, where I was uh, serving as a peer teaching assistant. So the teaching continued even in college, you guys. I was what's known as a TA for the CAU Honors Program. I am tested as gifted, and I was in the Honors Program, uh, but I had failed calculus twice, and I had given myself permission to take the psychology classes twice. So ironic, right? <laughs> so my very first coaching client fresh out of certification was a nonprofit organization leader who is now using the impact of her coaching sessions with me to advocate for social change in her community. Um, we did 12 weeks in-person coaching for free in the back of a honey baked ham. Something else is really ironic is I'm vegan. We're just going to leave that right there. Okay. Later, I branched out to offer a live weekly workshop and group coaching program for women entrepreneurs in my hometown. This is a clip of us in a private training room in our local mall. Did y'all know malls have training rooms you can rent out? I rented it for free because I asked, but I recorded our sessions and this is a screenshot from the session. I later partnered with a local co-work space in my hometown, a newly renovated million dollar facility. Um, and I hosted my first workshop. We had Bojangles sponsor us some chicken and green beans and macaroni. That's when I was eating meat. Don't tell nobody, okay? But this is my very first workshop. And the lady you see leaning in, she was the one that told me about life coaching. She was my business bestie for years. She was the one that got me to training, paid for my training. I paid her back. I got to throw that in there. I pay my debts, okay? Um, uh, and the lady sitting down with the little crown on her head, her, one of her uh, testimonials after this workshop with four people, maybe two or three paid to be there, uh, she said, this was the best workshop that I've ever been to. And that was the motivation. That's all I needed to hear to say, okay, I am on to something. Uh, the lady sitting close to the screen that says break, she was one of my college interns. She came just to support. She even paid to be there. I think the, the fee was like $25. So I was starting to get rich, okay? <laughs> this is a screenshot from one of the classes that I held in another co-work space I partnered with to be the face of their community. And in exchange, I got this room for free. So I started telling people, hey, y'all, I'm hosting classes. Here's the price. And we're going to do four of them. So it was a series of the teaching what I knew. Some of y'all ready to teach what you know. I hope that was in your mission statement today, okay? 
So as my life coaching company grew, I also became a well-known and recognized speaker, not just in my hometown, but in what I call my city, because Atlanta, Georgia is my city. Any event that would come to town, I would hear about it. I would be there either as a speaker, as a sponsor, as a spectator, or as a supporter. Write that down, because that's how you start making moves using your story as well. So people who had heard me speak, they loved the confidence I had in myself and my coaching business. And I began receiving invitations for guest speaking opportunities. And then I was also encouraged to write another book, you guys, another coach who had started to hear my story. She basically captured me in a red lobster in the back corner table. We were the loud table that day. She was convincing me that I best, not better, but I best put my story, at least parts of it, in a book. So parts of the story that I just shared with you, I put it in a book. That book became a bestseller and earned us our uh, extra $13,000 in my new coaching business as an additional stream of income. And this is me at my book signing here in Atlanta. People surprised me and showed up. They didn't register. That's family for y'all, okay? So um, my very first client, the Honey Baked Ham, <laughs> she was there. She brought her mom and her daughter. And we just had a really good time celebrating how far I had come since I told God yes. Then I graduated from Mercer University in 2016 with my Bachelor's of Applied Science in Training and Development. That's me sitting in the Georgia sun. It was hot. I was really orange in this picture. It's black and white, so you can't see it. I didn't know black people could turn orange, but I was orange that day. That's how hot I was sitting in the sun in a black robe. I said, I'm getting a picture to prove I was here. I did it. We made it, mama, because that was her dying wish. Just finish your education. And she will be so proud to know that her daughter is now a doctor. So here I am taking that picture. I had to get the sides because I had laid my edges real good that day with a perm. So yeah, that's my that's my picture. So my brother's family showed up to support. People from church showed up to support. And then shortly after, just a couple days after, I was traveling between two events here in Georgia where I won two awards, one for my university for my dedication to my profession and one for my work in the economic empowerment arena for girls and women and the work that I had done here in the community. And then, y'all, I got the sign off. I got the invitation to take all of this journey, my years of experience from where I was to where I had finally reached. I became an affiliate and a four-year training partner with the same life coach certification training company that certified me. This is that same million-dollar mentor who looked at me in class that say that day and said, AJ, you are going to do great things in this industry. So he ended up writing me a letter of recommendation and giving me his stamp of approval to come train his people. And this is just one of the 21 classes I hosted, 110 certified coaches from all over the world that would fly here to Atlanta with me that I trained. I interrupted their lunch that day. That was my very first class. I'm like, we're going to capture this. So this is all ladies representing all walks of life, all religions, all faith and beliefs. But this led me to training those 110 certified coaches from all over North America and the Cayman Islands. And then we wrapped up our, uh, our series of trainings just before the company and the partnership dissolved with our very last sold out in-person training here in Atlanta. So we all squoze in and took this picture because our training room was small. I look forward to getting back to those days because I just miss it. I'm a trainer at heart. Here I am finally making it right. I've personally had the opportunity to serve and support and share the stage with other coaching greats like Lisa Nichols. Anybody know her? She's from the movie The Secret. We spent a lot of time together that day. This is Tony Gaskins. He is also most known from his appearance on the Oprah Winfrey Show. He is also in the coaching space. This is me and Stormy Wellington. She is a coach and the highest earning African-American woman in multi-level marketing. And this here is me and Brandy Harvey, one of Steve Harvey's twin girls. She too is in the speaking industry. So I have been blessed on my journey, but it wasn't in vain. You know how when you're doing work and you don't know if it's enough and should I keep doing it, God? I'm ready to give up. Lord, if I can't pay my bills this month, I'm going to go get a job real quick. Well, God had to go ahead and encourage his daughter. I was then shortly following awarded with an honorary doctorate degree in Christian psychology for my 29 plus years that had added up, y'all. Somebody was paying attention to my journey from serving in ministry. And because of the work that I had done for the Lord, 
on behalf of his kingdom in making his name great in the earth, I was now given this degree that I would have had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for, but instead I paid for it with almost 30 years in ministry. I think that's worth a whole lot more than $100,000, right? So here I am, Dr. A.J. Austin, now encouraged to get the message out to the masses. I'm ready to reach more people, Jesus. So I started a podcast and a series of audio and video trainings that I've packaged and now offer as a home study self-study course for Black women of faith who are seeking to become professionally trained, skilled, qualified, certified life coaches. And we are over at blacklifecoachradio.com if you can see that down at the bottom. But I do uh, frequent trainings on just how to take the next step in your journey, because you got to start somewhere. Y'all seen that I started from the bottom. Now I'm here. Okay, we. this is a holy, holy event today. So recently, we were featured in a magazine, what was known as the Life Coach Corner. Someone reached out to me, saw my work from social media again, and said, we want your take on this life coaching industry. You have carved out a space for yourself. You are the lead trainer, the largest organization specifically for Black women in the Christian faith becoming certified life coaches online in one day from the comfort of their home. Tell us how you did it. And y'all, y'all see those pages and pages. Okay, so I told them how I did it a little bit. But futureblacklifecoaches.com is where I break down my journey and I really show you guys how I did it because we went from being featured in magazines to recently I won a 12-week film partnership with the Fulton County Films. They are the uh, main county of our capital here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I now have a film coach here in Atlanta that's helping me with audio and visual media production so that we can go even larger and reach way more people. So if you guys were at the pajama party, I was put on the spot and asked, you know, what was my goal going to the mid-year retreat? This is kind of a little twinkle of what it looks like and now coming to pass. So this is what helped us to kind of reach that goal. Our final part is the solution. This is what you need to write down because this is what you need. What I ended up doing, as you can tell, and you, you know from my story now, I niched down and I created my own method, my model, my mindset. Remember I said I had to condition because we grow up in 40 plus years of poverty. You got to condition that. It's going to take more than one time to read a book or hear a sermon to get you motivated. So I reconditioned my mindset, developed a model and a method. And I went from trying to help everybody do anything to serving those who were currently where I had been delivered from. Those who could see themselves in my story, those who struggle, story. And now style, because y'all could tell I'm a little bit of a crazy Christian, but there are other crazy Christians out there, right? I think some of y'all here today, ain't you know, um, so their success also looks like mine. They had seen my journey. They wanted the shortcut. They didn't have a lot of life to sacrifice and a lot of time to do it. And so I ended up taking what I knew, what I had been through, my story, my experience as a trainer, my expertise, everything that I've learned in all of these years since 2013, being a coach. And my story from back in the day, as you guys can see, I went back to your first photo, okay? And I ended up putting all of that information in an automated best-selling version of my live training in a home study course. Um, and again, some of our coaches are here today. So if you're one of our coaches, say, hey, girl, hey, in the comments. If you want to be one of our coaches, check out futureblacklifecoaches.com. That's where we are. So what had happened was, by special request, for my online and offline friends, fans, and followers who had seen me build my brand by training and coaching and teaching online, they also wanted to become certified life coaches themselves and earn an additional income for their own families. I was then encouraged to start my own online life coach certification training and development company in January of 2020. Yes, pre-COVID-19 coronavirus and quarantine. So the International Center for Life Coach Training LLC was birth, you guys. I had really made it, specifically teaching what I knew to Black women of faith from all over the world. In 2021, I ended up releasing the book you see before me called The Black Life Coach, How to Become a Professionally Trained, Skilled, Qualified, Certified Life Coach Online in One Day. I couldn't fit all that in there, so I just had to tell y'all what the real subtitle was. But it began to grow in fame. It became a number one Amazon best-selling book called the Black Life Coach. I'm giving away copies of this bestseller in the future Black Life Coaches uh, private community to those of you who request to join today. 
over at futureblacklifecoaches.com. Just saying, throwing that in there, giving back to those of you who has the vision. You've written it out. It's in some of the work we've already done here at the retreat today. Head over to futureblacklifecoaches.com. I started hosting my own live in-person workshops and focus groups throughout the city of Atlanta just to make sure that this is what y'all wanted and you said you did. So I hired a photographer to capture me in action because I was teaching. I was pointing to the screen. I was serious about this thing. I created products that represented my co coaching company from hats to my own shoe line, coffee mugs. Some of y'all might have just got one in the mail recently. I'm just saying if you're one of our coaches, you definitely did. We had t-shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, and I still to this day, my shirts have been through it, but I support my wear and so do my coaches. I created those products to help promote our coaching services. So I instantly knew that there was a need for what I did. Somebody's story matched mine, their struggle matched mine. So I went beyond creating just a focus group and launching the real thing. I recently read the book, We Should All Be Millionaires. Hint, hint, write that down because I increased my pricing. And over time, the program gained more and more and more interest. And this is us now, nearly two hundred black women certified life coaches worldwide and it all came together to help me get my life my ministry my calling and my anointing from god back on track y'all may know some of these people um we had another slide with more people so this was one of our goals from last year um and most of these coaches have trained. I think these are all of our online trained coaches and they were a part of that goal that I set. So you have to get specific with what you really want God to do. So you can find out more about us and join the mission and the movement at futureblacklifecoaches.com. We have an upcoming pop-up training that I'll share uh, more information about coming up soon as well. And then recently we were given what's known as the virtual keys to the city through the Center for Civic Engagement here in Atlanta. The Civic uh, Center for Civic Innovation is a fellowship program, a grant-based program who recently heard about us. They put me through a five-hour application process and said, your vision is so much bigger than the city of Atlanta. And they know the work that we're doing online and offline. And so they mentioned how what we do in the mental health space, which is life coaching, but it's an alternative to counseling, is so needed in the community, especially with everything that's going on with race and religion and things like that. And they just said, you know what? Because of your lived experience, your professional experience, we know you found your, cl your calling. This is not a prof uh, Christian organization, y'all, but they was like, we, we know. Yeah, you, you do what you're called to do. So as a recap, and just to make sure I'm on time, your story, you already know what you've been through. Y'all heard what I've been through. Some of you guys got inspired. How many had aha moments, light bulb moments, takeaways? You should have something written in your journal by now. You now know that you need a strategy. Let's talk about getting your strategy because your strategy is now gonna lead you to your solution for how getting you back on the right track to what God is calling you to do in your life and in your online ministry, that's how it leads to the final solution. So real quick, and you gotta type fast, y'all have been blowing these comments up. I can't wait to go back and read them. Now is the time for you to talk back to me and I'll try to glance real quick and pay attention. I love the hearts. Thank y'all. I feel loved. So let's, let's dream for a minute. Now y'all can close your eyes. I can't cause I gotta, I gotta look at you. Right. But take a minute to dream. Cause that's what we're doing today. So it's 365 days from today, like today, but next year. Okay. I want you to think through and maybe as we go throughout the rest of our time together, throughout the rest of the retreat, write this in your journal. Um, you can also real quick peek out of one eye and type it to me in the chat. What is your money goal for 365 days from today? Just throw it out there. Because again, write the vision. God going to catch it. You're going to send one of his angels down, catch it, and you're going to start to see it come to pass. So post that in the comments real quick. And then how many, how many people will you have helped by this time next year? You guys seen, I went from, can I do this? I need permission to do this. Let me help myself. Okay, now I can help one other person. Okay, now here we are 200 plus almost coaches uh, certified later. How many people will you have helped by this time next year? And then next steps. What are your next steps into getting there? My next step was getting certified. It was also sitting with my story. It was also being specific 
and writing out that vision for what I wanted God to do next in my life, regardless of where I found myself in life. So what do you think your next steps are in getting there? And then finally, what support or whose support do you think you need in this moment to help you get back on track? Because you are in the right place, the right environment to get that type of support, accountability, the resources, access to technology, funding, so much can be done if you really have a vision and you're super serious about what you say God is calling you to do. So now I wanna take a moment and open it up for Q&A. If you're not still typing uh, your money goals and your support goals and your next step goals, who has a question? I'm gonna check our uh, chat for questions um, here on Zoom if uh, I can find it. If any questions have been posted, let me take a look and see what I can see here. Okay, so I don't see anything in the chat. Let me see if I can. Okay, I see some goals. I'm loving this. I'm loving these numbers. Y'all keep typing. I love that we can also still type and interact even after we're no longer live, especially for our replay viewers. Put it in the chat. It's a part of writing your vision, okay? I see the millionaires, the future millionaires. All right. Imagine those people that you will have helped by this time next year. They are somewhere praying on you and praying for you right now. Are there any questions? I'm trying to glance for questions as these comments scroll by. Um, Anhalika, if you want to post any in the chat, I'm looking now, I'm focused now. I can see it if I missed anything from earlier because I was talking to y'all. Unlimited income, you better put a number on that thing. You can't take an unlimited income check to the bank. You don't, you don't want a couple of zero. Oh, okay, well, mm-hmm. We got some journals and books coming, being published, I see you. Seven figure income. Do you know seven figure starts at a million? So we're gonna need we need some numbers. I know y'all heard in our assignment earlier, first session, to put a number on that thing. Okay. I need to see how much y'all want these checks to be written for, because that's one of our taglines. I help coaches confidently convert conversations to clients, cash, checks, and credit cards. So your clients need to know how much to swipe their card for. Unlimited income don't go through on the unlimited black card. I'm just saying, put a, put a number on it. This has helped me revisit places that I had buried. All right. Yes, I see you 200,000. All right, keep the goals coming. Any other questions? Um, Angelica, you're welcome to jump back on with me. I am going to wrap us up here just in case I miss anything by letting you guys know that we do have an upcoming pop-up training over at futureblacklifecoaches.com. So if you have questions that I may have missed, I'm always in our private Facebook group for Future Black Life Coaches at futureblacklifecoaches.com. I'll be answering a lot of our most frequently asked questions about becoming a coach in that upcoming pop-up training. And remember, there is someone somewhere they are waiting on you, future millionaires in the comments, to walk in your destiny so they can walk into theirs. Because when you impact just one life, even if that one life is yours, you impact generations. So continue to let your light shine because you're giving others permission to do the same. I'm Dr. AJ Austin. Thank you guys so much for the engagement here today. Thank you, Kingdom Influencers, for the platform that you have shared to allow us to share our story and see how to make money from it. Awesome. That was so great, y'all. Um, what did y'all think? What did y'all think? So uh, Dr. AJ, we do have, um, I pulled two questions and popped them in the chat. Okay. Emily Douglas says, how do I bypass this imposter syndrome to be able to use my story to help people? Okay, let me sip tea with my pinky out. Hold on. You take yourself out of it. It's not about you. God brought you through something because you got something to give other people. My story is about other people. It just happened to have started with me. So when you remove yourself from it and you say, okay, God, what is it that you're calling me to do for others? Remember I said, I promised God that I would help others as I help myself. That, that's how you do that. Um, you don't even acknowledge it as imposter in, uh, syndrome because it has nothing to do with you. Um, that's really good. And Nola says support. What do you mean by support? So when you were asking what kind of support do they need, what did you mean by that? So what support do you need? Do you need 
a book, a podcast, a coaching program, to hire a private coach? Do you need a workshop, an event um, to go to YouTube, Google, audiobooks? What type of support do you need? Do you need funding? Do you need a support circle, an accountability process? What do you need support? Something that you don't have readily available to you right now. Um, because what I notice in our community for coaching is that many of us don't have someone either in the home with us or someone we could just pick up the phone and call and talk all things vision all things future, all things goals and dreams that actually cares about us getting to the promised land. They're not going to throw their own insecurities on us. They're not going to tell us it's a bad idea, but they're going to listen. Do you have that support? If not, that's the type of support I mean. Awesome. That is great. All right, ladies. I hope this session was awesome to you all. Thank you all so much for showing up today. Um, we're actually going to break for lunch. Um, couple of things before we break for lunch. You're going to see this in an email. Some of you guys have already seen it, but I'm going to make sure that you've got it. We want to hear back from you about how these sessions are going. Um, I'm going to post this in the chat. Will let me do this? Oh yeah, there we go. Um, we want to get your feedback. I am really, really big about feedback this year. It's the only way that we can really grow um, here in what we do in this space. And so I've posted it in the chat. I've actually pinned it. You will also see this. Um, I'll actually put it inside of the, um, the training library, like on the front page. You're also going to see it in email. We'll probably text it to you as well. But we want to get your feedback on the morning session as well as this session. You can take the survey as many times as you like, but we really, really desire your feedback. Let us know what you love. Let us know what we need to work on. Let us know what you want to see more of. All of those good things. We really, really want to see that. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back at, let's see, we're going to take a lunch break. We're going to come back at 1.30. So that's in about 30, a little less than, a little more than 30 minutes. Um, and we will be back at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here's what I asked you guys to do during your lunch break. Step away from the laptop, step away from your computer, go get something to eat, hug your loved ones. If you have fur babies, hug your fur babies. I'm gonna step outside in the snow for a little bit. Um, but do something that's just gonna replenish you and revive you. And then we will see you back at 1.30. Feel free to post in the Facebook group as well if you'd like to do that. Um, and uh, that's it. That's all we've got for y'all. So we'll see you guys. Enjoy your lunch break. See you at 1.30. Bye.